what 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 I might call order, you might not call order. Mm -hmm. And and what I might call chaos, you might not call chaos. Right. But we can't go by either party. Yes. Mm -hmm. To find out what real order is, we've got to go to the word of God. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Everything must come from this. Amen. This Amen. is the foundation. If you're a Christian and you don't believe in the infallible word of God as being the foundation, then everything you build will be faulty. Amen. So for Christians, believers, what does a Christian mean? Because everybody calls themselves a Christian. Those that follow the teachings of Jesus and abide by what he says we are to do as followers of him, we base everything off of scripture. Yeah. Doesn't mean that we're perfect. It doesn't mean that we know it all. But we know in part. And we prophesy in part. Yeah, we right. see in right. part. Yes. And when he who is the spirit of truth comes, we will know all things. Yes. But we use the word of God as our map. Yes. Amen. Any problem you have, any situation you face, you will find the answer. Yes. Yes. Here. That's right. Not on Oprah. Mm -hmm. Not on home. Right. God bless Dr. Phil. I love my watch. Mm -hmm. All those things are informative. Mm -hmm but not necessarily based out of scripture. Yes. Come on, somebody. Uh -huh. Now, as a Christian, you need to understand that you cannot continue to go through life and not be successful. Uh -huh. Amen. Amen. So. Amen. So. The you. days of being Christians who just make it and get by are over. Yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 In the days of old, becoming a people in church, Christians just made it by. Mm -hmm. Just got through. Just had enough to eat. Mm -hmm. Just got this paid. Just took 20 years to put a roof on the house. Mm -hmm. 30 years to put it on a little church as big as a garage. It took, took years to do stuff. When the scriptures showed us that things can be done overnight. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. Mm -hmm. Yes, it did. Uh -huh. yes. yes, it did. Mm -hmm. The children of Israel came out of poverty overnight. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right? Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Lord. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. A world was changed. From people being sinners to having an opportunity to now be saved overnight by the dying of Jesus Christ mm -hmm. and the raising of him from the dead. Amen. 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 I'm going to tell you something. You can come out of whatever you're in overnight. Mm -hmm. Now, for other people to see it, it might be a process. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. That's right. But for you who it's happening to, it happens overnight mm -hmm. because it starts with a thought. That's right. Yes. That's right. Yes. 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 Amen. That's right. Amen. Amen. Have you ever deliberated about something, something you need to do, and you get out thinking, maybe I'm going to do so and so and so, and you're taking months to do it, and then one morning you wake up and you say, I'm going to do that today. <laughs> Amen. That's right. Amen. Uh -huh. What made it change that moment was you changed your thought that day. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. If you're angry right now, you can change that like that. That's right. I don't need to pray for you. I don't have to prophesy to you. I don't even have to pull scripture to you. We ain't got to sing a song. We ain't got to say one mighty hour we serve. Come on. We ain't got to throw no fresh on you. We ain't got to baptize you. We ain't got to speak in tongues. You just change your mind. But if you keep listening to the enemy, the devil, and even your own self, it would be a picture painted like that canvas stating to you that you need to go through this a long time. Mm -hmm. And it starts with putting things in order. Somebody shout order. order. All right, chapter 14 of 1 Corinthians, beginning at verse 26. And you have it, say amen. amen. When then shall we say, what then shall we say, brothers? Now this is, this is Paul, the apostle, and he's talking to the church, okay? When you come together, everyone has a hymn. Okay, that's a, you know what hymns are, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, a song. Uh, a hymn or a word of instruction, a teaching and a revelation. A tongue or an interpretation. All of those must be done for the what? Strengthening of the church. 
so the purpose, I'm going to exegete this and take my time. So the purpose of tongues, a person breaks out and starts speaking in tongues in the service. I remember I told on that the difference between the infilling and then a speaking of the tongue. Mm -hmm. Okay? And then there's there there has to be an interpretation of it so there could be understanding. Yeah. If someone comes in and sings a song, a hymn, right? Mm -hmm. We come together or we hear a word of instruction, a teaching or a preaching, or a revelation where people's eyes are open to the scripture. He said all of these must be done for the strengthening of the church. Paul is saying to the church at Corinthians, the purpose of the Holy Spirit being manifest, the purpose of the word being taught, the purpose of songs being sung, a purpose of the purpose of the word coming forth and preaching or teaching or giving illumination, revelation is solely for strengthening. Mm -hmm. Now, he would not say to us that it was for strengthening if he didn't think or know that the church was weak. Amen. Uh -huh. right. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> come on. So he said the purpose of all that, because sometimes you come to church and say, why do we do that? Why do they sing songs like that? Why do, why do they pray like that? Why do they give teachings like that? It's so that we can strengthen the church. Yes. Yes. But you can't be strengthened unless you realize or are uh, honest enough to say that I'm weak. Yes, that's right. Yes. Amen. Yes. That's right. You have to first admit that I'm weak in an area mm -hmm. before strength can come. Yes. That's right. I can take, if you have a headache, I can put Tylenol right here or whatever you take. Mm -hmm. But if you don't admit that you have a headache, yeah. looking at the Tylenol is not going to help you. That's right. That's right. Now it's provided for the rejuvenation or taking the pain away. Mm -hmm. But if you don't take it, you're still gonna walk away the same way that you came in. That's right. And that's what happens with most Christians. Yeah. We come to church and we don't take the hymns, mm -hmm. the spirit of moving in the tongues, the prophecy, the teaching of the word of God. And then we go home the same way we came yeah. and we say God's not working. Uh -oh. There's no power there. It's not real. But it's because we're not taking the medicine. Right. Come on. Right. Me. Yeah. Watch this. So it must be done for the strengthening of the church. If anyone speaks in a tongue, two or at the most three should speak. So that's when it starts talking about, that's not talking about the infilling of the Holy Spirit. That means there are tongues that ring out in the church where if I were to start speaking in, 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 in tongues, it's a tongue where I speak. You don't know the language, but there's an interpreter to speak to tell you what God is saying. Yeah. And if many of you have been in service, you've seen some of that that happen when the Holy Spirit begin to speak. And, and there's, a, there's a holy hush that comes over the congregation yeah. when the Spirit of God is speaking. And then the person who's going to interpret now speaks and says, this is what the Lord is saying. Yeah. The tongues that comes from the Spirit of God speaking is God ringing in mm -hmm. to the church. Yeah. Yeah. When you speak in tongues, praising God, that's you calling Him. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. That's right. Are you with me? Yes. So when you pray in your heavenly language that you know you home and you're in the house or you're in the car, you pray every that's just you talking to God where nobody can get it on that line. Uh -huh. Come on, it's a closed circuit. Uh -huh. yes. I, I could be sitting in the car riding with you, you talking to God, and I have no clue. And, I, and the devil can't hear, he doesn't even understand what, what you and God are talking about. Uh -huh. yes. But then there's a tongue when God speaks to an individual to say something to the body that blesses the body and, and we're waiting and we hear it and we know it's God and he gives us an interpretation. Mm -hmm. So they're speaking and he says, well, this is my son, my daughter. The Lord is saying that I will visit this house in three days and that, I will do this and that. That is God ringing in. Yes. Mm -hmm. But he said, when God rings in, there at least needs to be two or three people mm -hmm. that have that ability or that gifting to be able to interpret it. Uh, okay? Right. Now, I'm teaching you about order. I'm going to show you a few things. You still with me? Yeah. Okay. He said, or at most three should speak one at a time. One at a time. Which means that he doesn't want confusion. Yes. Because a lot of times you go into churches and you see a lot of stuff and, it's, and it, it fosters confusion. Yeah. All right. You're not going to say that. All right. Yes. You, you have a lot of commotion. Yes. And God is a God of order. Yes. Yes, he is. Not mayhem. Mm -hmm. Amen. And that's not a name, uh, incidentally. 
If there is no interpreter, the speaker should keep quiet in the church and speak to himself and to God. So if that type of tongue comes to the church and there's no one to speak under the unction of God to interpret that, then that person who is flowing like that, just out, 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 out should hold that yes. and speak to himself or herself and have a conversation with God. Yes. Because that is not a message to the look, the church. Yes. It's to the church. Yes. Yes. You with me? Yes. Now I know this might be a little heavy in the beginning, but but you know, breakfast is the best part of the day. Mm -hmm. right. Amen. Right. Verse 29. Two or three prophets should speak, and the others should weigh carefully what is said. And if a revelation comes to someone who is sitting down, the first speaker should stop. So he says that that um, here we take this down. I might need you to read for me. Make sure it's clear. Now he says he says um, two or three prophets should speak, and the others should weigh carefully. So when a prophecy is going forth, prophecy is going there. There should be two or three others that what that should what weigh carefully. What it said, watch this, two or three prophets should speak. So there's two or three prophets speak. So I'm prophesying and there's two other prophets that are prophesying. Mm -hmm. While I'm prophesying, the other two are weighing what I say. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's right. To make sure that it stays in order. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. Have you ever seen me, uh, you see me on the road and I'm preaching somewhere and I, and I go into prophecy and I start prophesying and I look to the pastor and I say, am I all right? And because I know he's weighing yes. what I'm saying. I'm not left to my own devices because I'm called of God. Yes. Come on, man. I still, it still needs to be weighed to make sure that it's of the right substance. Because I could be wrong. Come on now. That's the only right. right. it, must, it must be weighed. So other prophets, if there's two or three, three of us here, one of them, or one there, one there, and I'm here prophesying, it's being weighed carefully. They have to weigh it to make sure that what I'm saying is right. Yes. Not that I'm just giving you a word. Word, yes, and yes. you running off doing what I say, yes. and too many times people live off of prophecy. Yes. Amen. So they run from church to church, get a word. Yes. Yes. You know you say yes. that. Yes. Say something, speak to me, speak yes. to me, speak to me. Yes. And you get a word of prophecy, and then you go and change yes. your whole life. Yes. And God said, and one scripture I'll show you later on, it said, He said, those are not my prophets. I have not sent them. Amen. Right. That's right. But we're so eager to hear somebody say something yes. to us right. that we want to hear anybody. Yes. It's, it's like in a relationship, it's like a it's like a person who's needy, a single person who's needy. I mean, really needy. In fact, couples will do this too. <laughs> yeah. They'll do it too. If a person's really needy, male or female, they'll run to somebody to satisfy their needs. That's right. Just to say something. Just talk to me. Just, just say something. Make me feel wonderful. Yes. Y'all ain't gonna say that. Whatever. I'll take you there. Just, just talk to me. So, so speak to something in me, because I just, I just need to hear something. Amen. Amen. Right. Yeah. Amen. Right. Mm, quiet and wrong. Right. Yeah. fan blown. <laughs> A lot of people run to different churches, different people, or they get into circles yeah. of people. Mm -hmm. Little, what, 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 what do they call it? Uh, they call it, uh, it's the word I'm looking for. Prayer warriors are called. Yeah, yeah. All right. It's not wrong having prayer warriors, but I think the name has gotten so far out there. And you, you know, it's like you have a good thing, yes, yes, yes. and then so many people yes. turn it bad that you don't want to call it what it's really supposed to be. Yes. Yes. Right. Because people say prayer warriors, but then sometimes prayer warriors can 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 try to take the place yes. of the pastor yes. or the real minister yes. or even of God speaking. Yes. Because then a person sits in church and can't even hear yes. the preacher yes. preaching or God yes. because I got to check with the yes. prayer warriors yes. and see what they say first. Yes. And you can't make a decision whether to cook your husband eggs or bacon oh. or pancakes or waffles until you talk to the prayer warriors first. Uh -oh. That's right. Oh. Right now. I'm telling you what I know. Yeah. Come on. And everything is subject to the prayer warriors. Mm -hmm. 
what they say as opposed to you listening to God speak to you. Yeah. Now the purpose of prayer warriors or a group of people or what we would call the presbyter to pray for you mm -hmm. is so that there might be unity and we can touch and agree yeah. as asking God for that particular thing and it be done. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. It is never to supersede the office of the pastor. It is never to supersede the order of God. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. In fact, God would get upset with you if you're so much in the here and me and not him. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, you better tell him. Like right uh -huh. Tell him. I get my orders from him. But what if I'm not around? What are you going to say? I'm going to wait till I see the back. I got to wait till the back. You got to be able to talk to God for yourself. That's why it's important you have a personal relationship. Amen. Amen. Now, how can we tell whether or not it's in order? Because when you get here or you get an opportunity to talk to me or whatever, if it lines up with the word of God, Amen. then it's all right. It's all right. Amen. But God is never going to tell you anything that goes against his word. I don't care who says it. You can fast 90 days. Come on now. And come off your fast and say the Lord should, but if it doesn't line up with this word of God, I don't care who came and visited you. That's right. It ain't God. People are saying, Pastor, how could that be possible? The Bible says that Satan comes as an angel of light, right. illumination. Yes. Mm -hmm. Which means that he falsifies his appearance as being true. Yes. And you can, you can be deceived by thinking that's God speaking to you yes. because it seems, oh, thank you, Lord, yes. the way that seemeth right to a man. Right. Uh, it seems right, but in the end thereof, it's right. destruction. Yes. Mm -hmm. That's why you can't go with feeling. Oh, I feel it. But if you feel it, you can't go by feelings. That's right. That's right. You have to go by knowledge. Yes. Yes. Some of y'all walk in here, it's cool. Some of y'all walk in here, it's a little warm. So you walk here as muggy based on what age you are. That's right. Mm -hmm. Whether you're male or female. Mm -hmm. Come on, somebody. Yes. Some of y'all flashing like spotlight. Ooh. Other ones, others just hot. Some of you can't breathe too good. It's based on where you are. Yes. You're you are not, not good barometers. So I can't go by how I feel. My feelings will always leave me out there. What's that? Feelings? Whoa, whoa, whoa. And all woes always come with feelings. <laughs> Watch this, are you ready? Okay, so if a, if a revelation comes to someone who is sitting down, the first thing you should stop, for you, for you call all prophecy, for you, I'm sorry, for you can all prophesy to turn, in turn, so that everyone may be instructed and what? And instructed and what? Encouraged. So when prophecy comes, he said, they prophesy in turn. So when people prophesy, it shouldn't be everybody just talking. Not, Thus say the Lord, thus say the Lord. And God said, it shouldn't be that. That's confusion. That's mess. Mm -hmm. He said, we should all wait our turn. Yes. Amen. Yes. Come on, somebody. Right. You, you ever try to walk through the door? Everybody trying to rush to the door in the, the store, the parking store. Everybody trying. And you see that person coming out of your peripheral. Yes. And then at one second, then everybody starts walking real fast. That's right. Everybody doesn't fit through the door at the same time, so what do you do? That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. <laughs> because if we all try to hit the door at the same time, somebody's going to get hurt. It's the same way in the spirit. Mm -hmm. if, we, if we're supposed to encourage and strengthen, you can't strengthen anything or anyone or encourage anyone in confusion. Yes. Amen. I'm, I'm, building, I'm building a real stage on this Amen. one right here. The spirits of the prophets are subject. What does it mean to be subject to something? Under. Under. There you go. The spirit, the spirits, plural, of the prophets, plural, are subject to the control of the prophets. Come on now, help us. For God is not a God of disorder, but of peace. The spirit of the prophets, so we've heard this quote many times, the spirit of the prophets, subject to the prophets. And many people walk away with different meanings. Let me show you what it really means. The spirit that's in me, this Holy Spirit, mm -hmm. is subject to me. Yes. Come mm -hmm. on. Mm -hmm. Which means I control it. That's right. mm -hmm. It doesn't control me. That's right. Come on. Come on, somebody. Mm -hmm. A lot of times when we get filled with the spirit of the Holy Ghost, right? We assume, or we've been taught, or we think how we view people is that it takes control of us and makes us do stuff. Mm -hmm. 